So when I was young, our dear parents used to have a press uh, over a door where they would keep all the nice stuff. So all the chocolates that were being bought for Christmas uh, would be kept up there. So it was obviously six foot six for the door and then the press started there and went up. So uh, as a young fella, obviously, this was like, it was like a mini Willy Wonka's chocolate factory up there. Like, you know, it was just this, this was, if you could at all, that's where you wanted to go because that's where all the good stuff was. Uh, so once I kind of grew legs and was able to assemble, push the table and assemble furniture on top of it, we eventually found ways of raiding the, uh, the biscuit press uh, on occasion. And then I came across this other thing. Uh, you know those little packets of jelly you can get? Not, not jellies, but the, the actual, little, it's like a little bar, like a bar of soap kind of thing that you put into boiling water and then you make a whole jelly thing out of. Well, we, we used to get the jelly, myself and my dear brother, and just eat the, just eat the raw jelly, as a, you know, because it was like hyper sweet, <laughs> right? And then <laughs> you'd be buzzing around the place afterwards. Strangely enough, that's what came to my mind this morning when I was reading uh, today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah where he speaks about a banquet. You know, remember this has been prophesied 8th century, 7th century before Christ, okay? So the Lord is preparing this, this beautiful place for us. And it, I, again, the, the, the details are always so, so important and so revealing. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. Did I forget to mention wine? Like he goes back to the wine to make sure. Is everyone, is everyone quite aware of the fact that we're going to have really, really good wine here? It's like, it's just, he, he's driving home the message. This is a place of joy, a place of happiness, right? So God's plan for us is a good plan. There's even the, the it's, it's a somewhat, I find a desperately saddening parable of uh, the king who invites uh, his subjects to a royal banquet. And they think people have different things to do. They've bought oxen, they, they, they've places, bought a bit of land, they have things to do. Better things to do than, than go to, like they'll be invited to a wedding feast. In, in, a, in a similar par parable, they actually kill the servants who come with the message. I'm just inviting you to a wedding. You know, why, why are you killing the servants and mistreating others? Well, I'm inviting you to a wedding. I'm giving you free food and an incredible celebration. Why are you killing the servants? Why are you killing the postman? You know, this wedding invitation comes in the door and you go, oh, I don't want to go to a wedding. S sorry? That's, that's effectively, you know, what the parable is saying. Killing the, 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 the prophets and those who bring the message makes no sense at all. This, this what's been being prepared for us is, is a beautiful banquet. But not only in the sense of, of a meal, obviously, because meals, as we all know, you start off starving, you know, you're absolutely hanging for Christmas dinner because normally it starts a bit later because there's so much more to prepare. So you're eating like at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you're starving. And then when you've had a second or third plate of turkey and ham, you actually, I actually have enough. But look, I mean, it's so good. But I should probably stop. But just one more slice of gammon ham or whatever it is, you know. And... And you're, you're kind of, your appetite is gone already. So after an hour, you're already satisfied and maybe beyond satisfied. Maybe you're feeling a bit ill, right, at that stage. But then the pavlova is there. So look, I mean, <laughs> sure look to be, to be rude to say no. And so, but the point being, th th this, what's being prophesied for us here, it's not like a standard meal. Because meals, you've got hunger and then satisfaction of hunger. And then you're actually kind of really, uh, you've enough. The, 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 the climax of that hunger has now been satisfied. Now you're, you're good. Whereas what's been prophesied for us is, is a banquet that doesn't end. Uh, like our, our deepest hungers, our deepest longings are being satisfied for all eternity. So it's not just a meal. It, it's, it, it's a way of life. It's, it's a whole st being taken into God where all of our needs are satisfied for all eternity. So, what do we have to do? Simple question. What do we have to do to get this? When I was young, eating the, them bars of jelly, what I didn't realize was, if you got one of those bars of jelly and put in about a half liter-ish 
of boiling water, you ended up getting loads more jelly as soon as it's set. So you actually got more if you just waited. Rather than just chomping into the raw bar, if you just lob in a half a litre of water, let it all do its thing, melt and then settle, then you could have a bucket of jelly and a couple of scoops of ice cream. You actually got way more if you just waited, if we just had patience, if we just put in a little effort, just a little effort. Of, well, maybe I shouldn't have been pouring boiling water as a seven-year-old, but I could have asked Mammy to do it. Uh, so the effort that God asks us to make relative to what we receive is tiny. The effort that God asks us to make in order to, to get into heaven is tiny in comparison to what we get back. I mean, weekly mass attendance, even if it was like a daily rosary along with that, like let's not aim for the minimum here. If you're to pray a daily rosary along with your, your weekly mass attendance, but then there are other things as well that are very important, the conversion of heart, so the forgiveness of those who've hurt me, letting go of grudges, Forgiving the various family members who uh, caused problems due to wills and, and, and bounds ditches and uh, different offences that always happen in families. Forgiving all of that, letting all of that go. Renouncing habits that, that we know are not from God. Fighting against addiction with the grace of God and with whatever help and support we need along with it. Like renouncing my own will. And it, it, these things, they, 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 they seem difficult to us. But I think from the far side, God willing, from heaven, we will look back and say, Jeannie, I don't regret a single sacrifice I made in order to earn, not earn this, in order to get here. We have to collaborate. We don't earn heaven, but we do have to collaborate with God to get there. But looking back, we would say, I would have done that and a hundred times more if I'd only known that it's this good. Like, in hindsight, from heaven, the help of God, we won't regret a single sacrifice we've made. We won't regret a single minute we've spent praying. We won't regret a single occasion where we've renounced our own will in favor of God's. What we're being asked to do is tiny in comparison to what's being offered to us. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. Amen.